in this video we will discuss about uh, the envelope protein of the hiv virus which is heavily glycosylated and that prevents it uh, and that uh, helps in uh, uh, that helps the hiv virus to to be detected by the immune system of the body or in other words this heavily glycosylation uh, is act as a shielding to act as a shielding uh, for this hiv virus against the uh, immune response of the host in general virus has four component envelope protein membrane protein spike protein capsid or nucleocapsid and the genetic material so in this uh, video we will cover the envelope proteins of the hiv virus that prevents it or act as a uh, that prevents it from immune response uh, by uh, with the help of this glycan shielding so that the immune proteins will not be able to detect this hiv virus and generate antibody against it so first panel is the they they have used three different uh, part of the uh, hiv virus separately and uh, this is the lc uh, up lc liquid chromatography ultra performance uh, mass spectrometry uh, data and here we can see that uh, glycans are uh, we can see the peaks for the glycans in all the three in all the three uh, variants so this uh, substantiate their point that hiv envelope is uh, glycosylated hiv envelope is glycosylated and it has some glycans on it in all the three uh, different variants all in all the three different uh, different in all the three different uh, part of this envelope uh, proteins and later on what they did is they identified whether the glycans are uh, crowded or they are dispersed among them and they also did uh, also uh, analyze whether the interaction between the glycans are strong or or not and that is been shown in this figure in the bcd in the uh, bcd represents the analysis in different uh, in different uh, part of the envelope uh, protein of hiv that that has been analyzed and we can see that uh, each of them has uh, some of the glycans that are crowded that are crowded that is shown here whereas very uh, few glycans are dispersed and the interaction between glycans is uh, strong in the case of the bg505 and x1193.c1 whereas the interactions between the crowded glycans are not so strong or compared to the other two cases in jrfl variant later on they also did the crystallography image and identify the uh, fo fn fo fn uh, image and that is being shown here in the panel e the zoom image of panel e is been shown here in his side so what happens in this fofn image map is that uh, if there is a uh, dif difference between the model and the structure that is available in the crystal then the density uh, will be then the density will be low as we can see in this side if and simultaneously if there is some uh, there is some atom that is present in the model but it is not present in the crystal then also the intensity of the density of the uh, density of the model at that point uh, the density of the image or we can say this fofc uh, electron density fofc electron density at that uh, point where there is a difference between model and uh, model and the crystallography image will be half of the strength compared to the other uh, portion where the model and the crystallography image is matches so in this case uh, we can see that most of the interactions are in line with the uh, model as the density is uh, remains the same uh, as density remains the same in 
uh, most part of their uh, models and this uh, FOFC uh, electron density map is been shown for uh, some of the sites in this uh, in this uh, panel and later on uh, they did uh, to check whether the interaction between those glycans where the interaction between those uh, glycans have some relationship with the antibodies or not and they use this nearest neighbor and glycan uh, sequence uh, analysis nearest neighbor and glycan analysis to check whether uh, there is any interaction whether this uh, dispersed glycan or crowded glycans has any kind of interaction has any kind of role in the in its interaction with the antibodies then and the point the uh, the red color the red color uh, glycans uh, shows a high interaction with the antibodies as we can see here in all the uh, three panels in all the three panels or we can say in all the three variant other in clad a clad b and clad g and they are not able to find any relationship uh, between this crowded glycan and the dispersed glycan on its role of its in interaction on its role on the role of this glycan interaction uh, to it to its glycan interaction to its uh, to the antibodies so this analysis does not provide uh, any this analysis provide us the information that uh, crowded glycans or dispersed glycans does not have much impact on its interaction uh, with the antibodies. So this is just a preliminary overview how this envelope uh, proteins glycosylations are uh, there on the HIV HIV virus or in other terms how this HIV virus envelope protein is glycosylated. If you need to understand this about uh, more about this uh, glycosylation of this HIV uh, envelope protein, HIV virus envelope protein, you can go through the reference that has been provided in the description. That's all for this video. Thank you for your time.